Good evening all, and welcome. The night sky is certainly an interesting place, and perhaps more goes on up there than we might give it credit for. Tonight we have 20 true testimonies from people who have seen UFOs and aliens. So get ready, because it's time to let the darkness take control. Around 1981, I was a kid in rural Montgomery County, Indiana. It was a perfectly clear day, and I was playing in the front lawn of my neighbor's house with my brother Pat. My dad was an Indiana State Trooper at the time, and I think that's relevant because we had spent plenty of time around helicopters by that stage in our lives. I knew that these things could hover in place and make a lot of noise and wind, and I knew what they should look like. My brother and I both looked up over the left side of the roof on my neighbor's house, and we saw two silver saucers. They were slowly rotating. We were about a hundred meters away, and one was slightly higher than the other, maybe overlapping just a tad. We watched them for a few minutes just sitting there. This was a perfectly clear sunny day, and after some time they both accelerated to a ridiculous speed towards the east. We ran inside and told my parents. Honestly, it was so insane that if my brother hadn't been there and if my parents didn't recall us freaking out over these, I'd probably try and write it off as a dream. If you look on screen now, you can actually see the picture that was taken by thousands in Mexico City. Even though I didn't take it, it was identical to what we saw. Now, I've told my UFO story many times, but there's another part to it. I prefer to think of it as just a dream, because while I can no longer deny the existence of UFOs, this is a bit more sketchy. It was around three or four. It was around three or four, which is where most people will stop listening, but my memories from that time were extremely vivid. Much of it feels like it happened barely last week. I got to bed one night, my security blanket at my side, much like my iPhone these days. I wouldn't be caught anywhere without the goddamn blankie. It's a tad white trashy, but it had a cigarette burn on the edge. For some reason, I liked it. I had a dream that night. I was in a large room. I don't recall being able to see the ceiling, and I was walking along a walkway that had a railing, and along the sides and all over this room were holes in the floor. I recall convincing myself that things must live down there, although I never saw anything. In front of me and to the right, was a bright area with beings of some sort who were interested in me. I have absolutely no recollection on what they looked like. While walking towards the light, I dropped my blankie down in one of those holes on the left side. Yeah, as you guessed, this is going to be key later on. I recall feeling humiliated as these things examined me. Yup, even the usual things that we heard about so-called abductions, which I don't want to entirely spell out. I don't remember having a very good time. I woke up next morning and my blanket was gone. I don't care who you are, you aren't going to forget that at any stage in your life. We looked everywhere for it. I never had a history of sleepwalking and our house was kind of small, maybe 1,500 square feet or so, and I remember my parents looking everywhere for it. It was just gone. It was a yellow blanket and of course I needed a replacement. The replacement was blue and my mum had to replace her signature cigarette burn. I'm very skeptical, and I prefer to think of it as some kind of dream, but the physical loss of the blanket, and the actual UFO sighting my brother and I experienced around that time, I don't recall it was before or after, really makes it hard to not tie together. It's the weirdest thing that's ever happened to me, and I'm alright if you don't believe it. I toyed with the idea of hypnosis, and maybe I'll do that if I'm convinced it isn't just nonsense. This happened in Southern California, May of 2008, between 10 and 10.30 p.m. I had just finished up my last class of the evening and was pulling up towards my parents' driveway. As a college student living at home, I often had to play car roulette with my brother or my father's truck so that I could park my car in the garage while theirs was still in the driveway. They generally left earlier than me and came home earlier. I parked my car on the street for the meantime 
and went inside to grab my dad's keys and came back out through the front door. Immediately I heard a helicopter in the distance. This isn't unusual, so I brushed it off and went about moving his truck out of the driveway and my car into the garage. During this time I had parked his truck on the side of the street. After I was done moving my car, I approached the driver door of the truck and reached out to grab the handle when I heard the helicopter was literally above me. At that very moment, I felt the sudden urge to look up and an uneasy feeling came over me, like I was being watched. I snapped my head back and the first thing I saw were three white lights in a triangular pattern that stayed static, never blinking, never pulsating, just stayed lit up now the most curious thing was that this was in the middle of the craft. It was a deep, dark red light that slowly pulsated in and out every five seconds or so. I stared at it in awe. It wasn't that far away from me. It couldn't have been higher than a few thousand feet, or at least that's what it seemed because directly adjacent to it was a helicopter that was super loud and visible. The triangular craft literally made no sound and it was easy five times bigger than the helicopter. Also, it seemed that the helicopter was escorting the triangle craft. As the triangular craft passed overhead, I couldn't help but feel uneasy and that I was being watched. I felt both scared and inquisitive and the curiosity got the better of me. I stood there and watched both until they passed over the horizon. After moving my dad's truck, I ran into my room and quickly Googled the description of what I saw and had found out that other people had similar experiences minus the helicopter. Seeing aircrafts from where I'm from isn't unusual. I live an hour away in each direction from two military bases. So do I believe this to be alien? Just on a gut feeling? Probably not. But whatever it was, it was most certainly creepy. This event occurred in 2011 and has haunted me every day since. I work in networking and all of our hours are late. I usually get off around 2 a.m. I'm up for a while longer before I go to bed. This evening I got off work and it was raining really bad on my way home. When I got home, by chance, the clouds broke and I stepped outside to have a quick smoke. One of my buddies called me and we were chatting about work. It was still not raining there and there were lying low clouds. There were orange street lights in Allen, and they were reflecting the bottom of the clouds creating an artificial light. There was a pretty good breeze whipping around but no rain. I was facing the west. I looked to my right and see a black cube moving out of the north and traveling south at about 60 to 80 miles an hour. It was moving with a corner forward. This thing was huge. I was astonished to the core of my soul and I sat speechless for a few seconds, knowing that I was seeing something amazing. It was between 80 to 100 foot tall. It was a black cube in shape and looked like a rough stone surface. On the side of the cube was a border and within the border was a circular symbol. If that's what it even was. It looked like if you were to draw a circular maze. It was disturbing. The air behind it created a vaporous trail spinning behind it and then disappearing. There was absolutely no sound, none, and if you know Dallas, it was traveling in the direction of southbound 75 Central Expressway towards downtown. I told my buddy what I had seen and he lives a few miles south. I fumbled over my words telling him and asked him to go outside to see if he could see it. He went out to the middle of his street and looked in the direction it was coming from. After about five minutes, it started to rain again. He stood out in the rain for another 15 minutes, but never saw it. Good friend. Anyway, no one can ever tell me that I didn't see what I saw that night. I have been ridiculed and even laughed at, but I know what I saw. It's almost a relief at this point to know that they are really here. I've been a long time lurker and really had to get this off my chest and have been searching for black cube UFO for years now, every single day. I cannot stop thinking about it. I have to see it again. Thank you for listening.
One night I was coming home from work, between one and two in the morning. I live on a peninsula, so the road I was travelling down serves as the main thoroughfare for my area. As I was nearing the side street where I live, I approached a Baptist church. Immediately I could tell there was something odd about the church because the parking lot was dark, when usually it was lit up. Instead, all I could see at first was a singular blinking red light, the kind you would see on a phone tower. But the light wasn't blinking in any ordinary fashion, as it did not appear to follow any kind of pattern. I slowed down as I neared it because something hovering over the church caught my eye. The blinking red light appeared to belong to a giant airship that was hovering 150 feet above the steeple of the church. I was absolutely flabbergasted. I won't pretend to be some kind of expert on helicopters or planes, but this airship followed no traditional guidelines that I had ever seen before. It was long and cylinder-shaped, with no identifiable front or back. The red light was in the middle. It didn't have wings or rotary blades. It had large, vent-like protrusions that had white light coming out of them, and it made no identifiable noise, and it was just idly hovering over the church. At some point, it began drifting to the side like a balloon. The phone I had at the time was a terrible BlackBerry with a 2 megapixel camera, and I tried to get to the back of my car and grab my DSLR, but the moment I put it in park and started to turn around, the ship began to move. In what seemed like half a second, it had shot off to the west and was gone in the blink of an eye. I still have no logical explanation for what I saw. A few weeks after I saw the thing, I had an extremely vivid dream in which creatures crawled through my window and tried to take me out of my bed. They were muttering in a weird language that sounded like shrieks and clicks. I'm confident this was a nightmare, but it seemed somewhat significant to mention this. This probably happened in around 95. At the time, I was a pizza delivery guy. I was out on a delivery, and after the delivery, I was returning to the store. While driving along the highway, I noticed three still lights, almost in a row way above the horizon. It was evening slash dark and stars were visible. At first though, I thought it was a plane coming from the airport, as they were brighter than the stars that were out. They only looked still because I was driving on the highway, and I assumed my mind was playing tricks on me. Over the course of the next few minutes, as I was continuing down the highway, I noticed the center light started moving up. It continued into the shape of a triangle. I continued to try to keep an eye on the triangle of lights in the distance as the whole thing started moving up into the sky. I eventually lost eyesight with the thing behind the trees slash whatever else and made it back to work. I was utterly confused by the whole thing and didn't tell anyone because I figured they'd think I was crazy. I kind of even thought to myself that I was just making it up. I don't know why I remember this part. This all happened about a week before the Super Bowl. Might have even been the Friday before Super Bowl. But all I remember is that before the Super Bowl, I was watching the Sci-Fi Channel. Some show was on about people who had seen UFOs, whatever. I was always skeptical. Then they did a segment on the numerous sights of triangle-shaped lights and they started showing clips of the few examples that people had caught on video. And it was exactly what I had seen. Never saw anything since. No one else reported any strange lights that weekend as far as I know of. I was a dumb early 20s kid and didn't really pay attention to the local news anyway. But I'll never forget that incident. I saw something once in around March, April of 1994. We had gotten out of work around midnight and were walking over to visit another friend about a mile or so away. This was also out in the country, so pretty much empty and quiet at this hour. About halfway to our buddy's house, we notice low in the east, a bright light in the sky. Now, I grew up in the sticks and spent plenty of time stargazing, so I'm pretty familiar with all the stuff you get to see in the night sky. Not the moon, not the stars or a comet, and there are no street lights for miles. So we think maybe an airplane, but it really just seems to hang there in the sky. 
were looking at it across empty farmland, and I'm guessing here, but I would say at least three miles away. So maybe a helicopter, but it's completely silent and really strange for it to be out at nearly one in the morning. We kind of joke around as we're watching, saying stupid stuff like, better call the X-Files. Rather suddenly, the light dims. It's only barely visible now, but it's still hanging there in the sky. Being young and fearless, we talk about running across the field to see if we can grab a better look. But at its distance to us, we figure there isn't a good chance we could run all the way there. Then all of a sudden it brightens a lot. I'm talking like full moon bright. Now it's bobbing back and forth in the night sky and it's utterly silent. I still find the most creepy thing about it, just how quiet it is. And we're starting to wonder if staring there gawking at this thing might not be the best idea when it dims again and starts moving away at a pretty decent pace towards the south. We watched it for five to six minutes until this day I still have no idea what it was. Possibly a helicopter with a spotlight shining back and forth, but it makes little sense as to why it would be out at this hour and how the hell it made no noise. This happened decades ago in the desert on a lonely stretch of road in the middle of the night in California. My mother and I went for a drive with another boy. I don't remember anything about him now, just to pass some time. At some point, the car's interior filled with a red glow, and within seconds, we realized the light was coming from behind us. I turned around and saw two or three red lights, maybe a car's length behind us. My mum was acting anxious and said she was going to pull over at the bend coming up. Now about this road, there was an empty highway about a half mile behind us, and the bend led to a small community. There were no paved roads to turn onto between the highway and the bend. Wherever this mystery car slash vehicle came from, it either came up really fast from the highway or was hidden in the darkness on the side of the road when we drove by. My mum pulls over at the bend to let the car slash vehicle pass, but it doesn't. We watch the road continue on and see nothing. We look behind us and see nothing. We stare at each other, a little freaked out, and decide to head back home. My mum's boyfriend at the time seemed surprised. You guys were almost gone for three hours. I was starting to get worried. This was an adventure that maybe took half hour. That was it. What really got to me was my reaction a few months afterwards. You know those pictures of aliens, the big grey head, the big black eyes, the slits for mouths? The first time I saw one in a book, I was terrified. Tears welled up in my eyes and I had to close the book and put it down. It literally took me years to not react that way. I'm really, really skeptical now. I don't believe aliens visit us or abduct us, but I have no explanation for what happened to me when I was a kid that night. About six years ago, I went out with my friends one night to watch the Perse Aid meteor shower. We head out to the countryside to visit a park, which is considered a dark sky reserve. But we got lost and ended up in corn country. We pulled into a random church parking lot and watched the best meteor shower of my life. You could actually hear some of the meteors burning up in the atmosphere. At one point, some white lights appeared over the treetops. My friends asked me what it was, as I have my pilot's license, and figured it was just a pilot flying at night with some landing lights on. Out in corn country, some people must have their own private airstrips. Well, it slowly rose above the trees as it headed straight down towards us, and it soon became clear that this was not a farmer's little plane. As it flew directly over us, it had two forward-facing white lights and one downward-facing one with a consistent red light in the middle. I know from experience that these are not typical nav lights or arrangements for aircrafts. It also didn't have an engine sound. It just sounded like air, like if you turn on a shop vac ignored the sound of the motor, and put the nozzle to your ear. It was steadily sucking around. I've never heard an aircraft sound like that before or since. The thing flew 150 feet over our heads, that it was so close enough that it, we could make out its shape by the way it blocked the stars behind it. The best thing we could gather 
was that it was shaped like a stingray. It left as it came and flew off into the distance. It didn't do any kind of unusual aerobatics that a normal aircraft couldn't do, but we just watched it in awe as it came and went. It was still a truly bizarre experience. I've also experienced missing time. It happened years before the UFO experience. One time when I'd gotten home from work, I checked my car's clock in the driveway and then quickly walked into my house. When I got to my house, it was about a half hour later, thinking my car's clock was wrong. I went back to fix it right away, so I wouldn't forget my car's clock. Also said it was half hour later. I grew up being a huge believer in UFOs. As I've gotten older, I've become more of a skeptic. However, I do have a quick story to share about a strange experience. This happened probably around three to four years ago. I can't remember exactly when. Me and my friend do photography on the side. So one night we decided to head up to a place called Mentor on the Lake in Ohio. This area is located right on the shores of Lake Erie. It was nighttime as we were trying to do some night photography. We headed down about a 30 foot hill to the shore. We walked probably a quarter of a mile west on the shore, eventually reaching some sort of old stone foundation. We decided this was a cool spot to shoot. The hill behind us was even steeper now and filled with sense trees to get some kind of eeriness. There was a lot of light pollution because if looking north out on the lake, Cleveland was to the west. Anyway, about an hour in we started noticing something strange. Directly north out over the lake, a tungsten orb appeared out of nowhere. At first, being the skeptic I am, I thought it was one of those Chinese lanterns, but realized that's impossible unless someone was sitting on a boat on the lake with their lights off illegally, releasing this candle. I obviously ruled that out when the light slowly started floating our way. Then I'm like, okay, it's just a plane. We were going to find out anyway, because it was heading directly our way and was going to float right over us. So this is where it gets weird. I got to the distance where we knew it wasn't a plane. There was absolutely no blinking and you could tell it was low enough to where if it was blinking, you'd know. Right as it's about directly over us, the light slowly started to dim out. There's not a cloud in the sky. When I saw that light start to dim out and eventually disappear, I had an overwhelming sense of fear. It was just so creepy. The night went on and we were shooting for another half hour or so, still glancing up occasionally just to see if it comes back. And suddenly it does. I didn't see it appear, but it came fully lit from behind the trees that were behind us on the shore. It floated slowly back out above the eerie water where it came from and eventually slowly disappeared just as it had done earlier. I don't know what that light was that night, but it is definitely one of the creepiest and most interesting experiences I have ever had. Back in the 90s, my parents had come up to Shenandoah National Park for their honeymoon. The place they both love to go to and we still go there to this day. They stopped at an overlook and they sat on the front of my father's old jeep to watch the stars. After a while, my father had to get up to take a leak. And well, he's in the forest and he walks over to a tree and takes a leak then heads back to the car. It's about 1 or 2 a.m. and they began getting tired as they were hiking all day and were doing normal camping stuff. So they decided to start heading back. Before they got in the car, they saw a light, a really bright white floating in the forest light, and they just watched it. It shot from tree to tree, then to a tree in the center median, and snapped around in there and shot off into the forest, again bouncing from tree to tree faster than anything they'd ever seen. To this day, they swear by it, and we began calling it the tree hopper. Whenever we go to the overlook, we get the feeling we're being watched, and we get chills down our back. We saw the same thing a few years ago, but this time in BJG Meadows, about 3 a.m. on a night hike, walking through the meadow on the stone drive, hopping around the trees and then vanishing, only to be seen again as we were driving away in a small cluster of trees. And we haven't seen it since. 
On another occasion, I was in the car with my brother, and we were on our way to the store to run random errands. Now, at the time I was young, about 13, so I looked out the window and watched the trees go by. I looked up into the sky looking at the clouds when I saw a very fast grey ball shoot off in the distance, then stop dead and turn back and repeat before slowing down to a stop. After a moment, what looked to be two military jet fighters flew out from behind the clouds and this thing shot off like a bullet and they tried to follow it. I watched as long as I could for only a few moments and my brother and I were freaking out over it. To this day, we still talk about it. A few years ago, I was in central Arizona with a few friends driving out on some forest service roads around 9 p.m. We stopped at this giant boulder just sort of sitting out in the ground and climbed up to sit and enjoy the desert view for a while. We're sitting there talking when I noticed this weird orange light looking like a bright star out in the sky. At first, it's just sitting in one spot, but then it starts moving around fast as hell in all sorts of directions, just like your typical UFO dancing light phenomenon that you see on a hoax video. I can't quite remember how it showed up, whether it just appeared or flew into view, but a second identical light showed up, and these things just started looping and darting around the sky. At first, we chalked it up to some people flying quadcopters, as they are the only thing I've ever seen dart around like that. However, as quiet as we could be, we couldn't hear so much as a low hum. It was dead silent out there. Mind you, I grew up in Central MD, right under the flight paths for an airport. So I knew planes, what they look like, how bright they are, and the weird optical illusions you see when they fly through haze and cloud. At this point, we had all lived in Arizona for a few years and were very familiar with satellites and how they look. The distances these lights seem to be covering. Picture your horizon as a circle. I'd say they were going back and forth across the distance, about one sixth of that circle, all while appearing to be a distant plane, combined with the total silence ruled out quadcopters. They pretty much just danced around for a few minutes before they both shot off in one direction extremely fast and faded away in the blink of an eye. I don't know what to tell you. I honestly have no idea what they were. The grand reaction we all had was turning to each other afterwards and saying, well, what the hell was that? When I was around 12, my family brought a fishing cabin by a small river about 70 miles from our home. On our first visit to stay in this cabin, it was kind of a work vacation, meaning we were painting and fixing and stuff, as well as fishing. One of the people who lived near this cabin came over to say hi and introduce herself. During the course of her visit, she told us, don't be afraid of the purple glowing mist you'll see. It's just from the UFOs and they won't hurt you. All of us kids sniggered at this while elbowing each other so my mum chased us off and apologised to the woman. She later yelled at us for being rude. Two nights later we were out fishing with my dad. The stars were amazing, without the city light to pollute them. And we were all pointing at different constellations and challenging each other to name them. My youngest brother pointed to a perfect circle of about seven bright stars and asked, what are those called? We all kind of froze and stared, because, well, there's no such constellation. Yet here it was. While we were looking at the stars, they took off silently in different directions and vanished all over the horizon. We ran. Looking back, it was stupid to run. I mean, the things were already gone, but we were spooked and we ran as fast as we could back to the cabin where mum was sleeping. About half the way there, our dad overtook us and ran straight into the cabin ahead of us, slamming the door. When we got into the cabin, he told us, just shut up, go to bed. He sounded angry, so we did just that. The next morning at breakfast, when we tried to talk about it, he said angrily that he didn't remember any of it and to stop with the stupid stories. My sister asked why we ran then, and then he said he was tired and wanted to go to bed. He was tired, so he ran. My dad could be a real goober sometimes. This wasn't the only time we saw things in the sky while staying there, but it was the most interesting. We tried on a few occasions to get pictures, 
but it was the early 60s and cameras sucked half the time back then. At least the cheap kick cameras we had did. We were afraid to ask to use Dad's good camera for that. We only had that cabin for a few more years when my dad suddenly sold it. We never could get him to talk about that night. He would firmly deny it ever happened. We never did see the purple glowing mist though, even though we looked for it. I saw something crazy with my parents inside and directly outside my house when I was a kid. I grew up in a nice suburb in the Midwest. I was the first born. And one night when I was about six, I was sitting on the couch watching TV with my parents. It was dark outside, and we lived in a typical ranch style three bedroom home. The south side of the house had the bedrooms off on one straight hall leading from the living room that we were watching TV in. We noticed a light coming from the bedroom at the end of the hall, which was strange because the lights were off in that part of the house. So we looked at what appeared to be a one foot by one foot sphere if bright light was illuminating the room, which at the time was my bedroom. As if it realized it was being observed, the spear then moved through the wall outside into the small alleyway between our house and the neighbors and then proceeded to move around the house very quickly in a matter of seconds, which we observed through the windows before it vanished. Please also note, it passed through or over two six foot fences in doing all of this. All of this really scared our dog in the backyard and became vocally scared. My parents freaked out. My dad grabbed his revolver and a flashlight and stormed outside but found nothing. It had recently rained and there were no footprints or anything. I've talked about this with them as an adult and it's kind of a family legend, but they don't really like to talk about it. It logically sounds like ball lightning, but my dad is convinced it was an extraterrestrial, while my mother being more religious, think it could be an angel. But I am unsure on what it could have been. This happened in Thanksgiving of 1992. I was on the 8 East Freeway between San Diego and Yuma. I know we were driving for a while, but I'm not exactly sure as I had completely zoned out into my Game Boy and was putting my work into Boxhall. It was around six at the time in the back seat, while my aunt and grandma were in the front chatting. I decided to take a break and lay on my back to stretch my cramped legs, and that's when I saw it. In the clearest, most beautiful and cloudless sky was a single platinum ball, silently floating, then vanishing, only to find it hovering in an entirely different part of the sky. No acceleration or deceleration was observable. Simply a solid ball or disc one second, then it became a straight line and then it was a solid object again at the end of the line. Not a transformation, but as a visual description as how fast this thing was. I asked my aunt, Mira tía, ¿qué es esa bolita? Which translates to, auntie, what's that little ball called? She sadly ignored me with, No puedo bebé, estoy manejando which means, sorry little one, I'm driving, not now. Science-minded little me just assumed it was some kind of awesome human tech that I hadn't actually learnt about yet. Funnily enough, after I got a little older and told my aunt, she told me that she had her own much closer sighting in Mexico, and my dad too. Their sightings sound a lot more intense as it was at night, and they got to see colourful lights but I was lucky enough to have seen what I saw, and it pretty much changed my outlook on the universe and what I consider possible in this reality forever. I've seen a few UFOs, and by UFO I mean that literally. I have no clue what they were. All I know is that they were flying and I couldn't identify them. The first one was when I was in seventh grade, me and my best friend Bob were up late watching Robot Chicken on my laptop, laughing to ourselves, when suddenly we keep having these red and blue lights shine over the laptop screen. We went over to the window to look, and in the sky was this ball of light. It kept shifting from red to blue, then orange, then blue. That pattern repeated. And then we tried to use his telescope to see what exactly it was. We couldn't tell, even with the telescope. Finally, it sort of drifted off to the left, haven't spoken to him about that lately. I'll check with him and see if he remembers tomorrow. But the second one was weirder, considering I experienced it with my mum. We were taking the trash out, 
and it was a clear summer night. I looked up into the sky to see this brightish reddish light over the trees and mentioned something about it being Mars. My mum replied, That's not Mars. I think it's coming towards us. Sure enough, that light, that wasn't flickering or blinking in any way, whizzed directly overhead. It was moving. We sort of just went back inside and locked our doors. Weird stuff. About 10 years ago, middle of summer at my grandparents' place, myself and four of my relatives were sitting around by the pool at 8pm. There was a blackout in the suburb at the time, so there was bugger all light coming from anywhere, and we had been using the pool to cool off in the absence of air conditioning. Because there was very little ambient light, we had a much better view of the sky than usual, so we were all looking up at the stars to spot constellations. At first I saw what I thought was a little comet or a satellite or something. It looked like a dim star moving across the sky fairly quickly. It looked like it was going from east to west, and we watched it for a few minutes as it made its way across the sky. But when it was almost directly above us, it came to a complete stop. I don't mean it just slowed down, I mean it stopped completely. I had just sat there for a couple of minutes, and then started moving again. But this time it started to head north. Then after 10 seconds or so it stopped, changed direction again, and continued moving for another 10 seconds. It kept doing this for about 5 minutes, constantly changing directions and stopping. Each time it took off again, it didn't seem to accelerate at all. It just took off at full speed and then stopped immediately. After making a final change in direction, it stopped once again and then just vanished. It was as if someone had flicked a light switch. To this day I have no reasonable explanation for this. I have tried to justify what I saw a few different ways, but I still can't come up with anything. My significant other and I were roading in the Cibola National Forest. On a few of the turns there's a spot in the trees overlooking a cliff. At one of these we saw a weird thing in the car. I can't even really say it was in the sky because it was so close. I could see the other parts of the mountain behind this thing. It did this weird thing, almost like a loading bar, lighting up, wiped back to front, then vanished. I still don't know what the thing was, we both saw it. It had a wider back and went to a point at the front, and the front part curved down. It was terrifying the whole way out, because the road wasn't wide enough to turn around on, and there weren't more openings in the trees like that ahead of us. No missing time, nothing weird like that, but it was a good minute before either of us said anything. I've been back since, and it took months before I was willing to, to be honest, and I haven't seen anything like it since. This happened a few days ago. I was walking down the street in the dark to meet up with a friend that was walking in my direction around 8, walking down a major street, and I hear this weird whistling and I keep brushing it off and kept walking, but I could tell it was getting closer. If any of you know what a turbo car sounds like when it starts up, all that air rushing and the high-pitched squealing, it sounded a lot like that. I looked up and there it was, flying across the sky, low and fast, huge. It was somewhat see-through with a clear outline, a triangle with three dots. My first thought was, holy crap, it looks just like the pictures do in all the documentaries. I look around, there are no cars nearby, and I'm thinking to myself, man, I really have to be alone, no one's going to believe me. Not even a minute later, I meet up with my friend and asked him if he heard the whistling. He said, yeah, then I asked if he saw it. He replies with, saw what? And I already knew he missed it, and he wouldn't believe me. I didn't go around telling everyone, other than him, I haven't told anyone else. I'll honestly never forget seeing it. And now when I watch those UFOs, I'll have a stupid grin on my face. I was in marching band all four years of high school. One of the things we did was participate in a 4th of July parade every year. When we got to the parade, we'd do warm-ups, getting order, etc. Then march in the spot where we were assigned and wait until a particular section of the parade had passed. Once they passed, we would march in place behind them, run the parade route and then that was it. 
On my junior year, we went to the parade as usual, did our warm-ups, got everyone in order. Well, when we were assigned to our waiting spot, we had to wait a few minutes rest before we actually joined the parade. Naturally, this led to people talking to one another, hanging out, whatever, just to pass the time. I wasn't in a spot near any of my friends in our parade lineup, so I was just mostly looking around silently while others carried out their conversations. At one point, I was watching the sky. The sky was one of the bluest I'd ever seen, literally not a single cloud in sight in any direction, where I saw two circular silver things flying beside one another. They were going at a speed of no object I'd ever seen, and they were literally at the height you'd normally see passenger planes at, as they glinted in the sunlight. They were almost swiping across the sky as quickly as you could move your finger, never getting closer or further away. I went to point it out to someone, but when I looked back at the sky, there was nothing. I watched them for a full 15 seconds before telling anyone, and I was 100% sober that day. I just wish I knew what they were. I've been an amateur astronomer since a preteen, and have spent hundreds of hours under the night sky, and have been taking astro photos for several years now. In all that time, I've seen a lot of cool and interesting things in the sky, but never anything I couldn't explain. Around three years ago, I was setting up for a night of imaging, and called my wife out to the backyard to look at a few things before starting the image run. I was slewing the scope over the great globular cluster in Hercules, when I caught a strange red-orange light, almost a point source, out of the corner of my eye, moving towards us from northwest to southeast. I think I said aloud, what the hell is that? As I couldn't see any anti-collision lights. It was very bright and in the wrong place and moving in the wrong direction for the approach to the regional airport about eight miles away. As it got closer, I saw another one further away and through the trees, which was soon joined by another. Both my wife and I just stared, stunned and slightly on edge. As for the next 20 minutes, these lights tracked nearly overhead, more than two dozen of them. Some in pairs, some in trios, in a triangle formation, completely silent, as a few flew past and disappeared off into the east. At some point I remembered my phone took some video, but of course the typical shaky and blurry crap you always see when people claim to have captured UFO footage. Both my wife and I have terminal degrees and are both research scientists, and all of our training makes us skeptical of unsubstantiated claims demanding evidence before accepting, but neither of us have come up with a satisfying explanation for what we saw that night. We thought maybe Chinese lanterns, but checked the weather conditions, including flight weather, and the winds aloft were from the south. So, if what we saw were lanterns, then they moved against the prevailing wind. Hey guys, it's Mort here. Thank you so much for listening and joining me in tonight's episode. I post four times a week. The next episode will be on Wednesday, then Friday, then Saturday. And on it will go forever. If you liked what you heard, feel free to subscribe. We have new stories all the time. And yeah, it would be great to have you. So be sure to subscribe and press the bell icon if you haven't done so already for more horrors all the time. I'd like to give a huge thank you to everyone who let me use their stories in tonight's video. Aliens are always pretty creepy to talk about, so I hope you enjoyed. All right then, guys. As always, a huge thanks to my members and patrons whose names are on screen. You guys are amazing. I also want to apologize for the lack of content. These last few days have been a bit hazy, a bit difficult because of baby complication stuff. Don't worry, everything's fine. But I think she's going to come very soon indeed. So, you know. Keep that in mind for posting scheduled stuff. But for now, I'm going to sign off. Stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.